Today, detectives from the Fairfax County Police Department's Major Crimes Division turned over a very thorough in-custody death investigation as related to the death of Ms. Natasha McKenna, who was in the custody of the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office at the time of her death on February 8, 2015. This investigation was conducted over the course of the last five months and it was our duty to ensure the McKenna family and our community understood their police department would take all investigative steps to produce a very thorough investigation. The following I am about to discuss is a timeline of the events and an overview of the investigative process. On January 15th, 2015, the Alexandria City Police Department came into contact with Ms. McKenna and as a result of that call for service, the Alexandria City Police Department issued a felony warrant against Ms. McKenna for assaulting a law enforcement officer. The warrant was issued on January 20th. On January 25th, 2015, a call for service was received by the Fairfax County Department of Public Safety Communications from Ms. McKenna advising she was the victim of an assault. The Fairfax County Police Department responded to this call for service. The arriving Fairfax County police officer then assisted Ms. McKenna with making the report and she agreed to be examined at a local hospital for her alleged injuries. Detectives from the Fairfax County Police Department's Major Crimes Division and our crime scene section also responded to conduct a follow-up investigation. While at the hospital, Ms. McKenna, detectives, and a victim services specialist assisted with the investigative efforts. During the course of the investigative efforts, Ms. McKenna declined to pursue the investigation and also declined further police services. While conducting their investigation, officers learned that Ms. McKenna had an outstanding arrest warrant for assault on a law enforcement officer in the city of Alexandria. In the early morning hours of January 26, 2015, Ms. McKenna was processed at the Fairfax County Adult Detention Center for the service of a felony warrant and she was remanded to the custody of the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office as directed by a magistrate. The Fairfax County Sheriff's Office made contact with officials from the Alexandria Sheriff's Office at 7.40 a.m. on January 26. This was an attempt to arrange for transportation to the city of Alexandria as the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office was holding Ms. McKenna on an Alexandria City charge. On Saturday, January 31st, it was reported by the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office that Ms. McKenna physically assaulted a Fairfax County Deputy Sheriff while incarcerated at the Adult Detention Center. On Tuesday, February 3rd, the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office, pursuant to its protocols for managing combative inmates, made a decision to have the Sheriff's Emergency Response Team, known as CERT, remove Ms. McKenna from her cell for transport to the detention center in the city of Alexandria as related to her charge that originated in the city of Alexandria. As CERT attempted to secure Ms. McKenna in her cell and restrain her for transport. She physically resisted the deputies and refused their commands. The cert consisted, consisted of six deputy sheriffs, which included two supervisors. During attempts to restrain Ms. McKenna, a member of the cert deployed an electronic control weapon on Ms. McKenna multiple times. While being restrained, deputies placed a spit net on Ms. McKenna to prevent her from spitting. A nurse from the Sheriff's Office medical staff was present at that time to check on her prior to transport and cleared her for transport. Deputies attempted to put Ms. McKenna in a medical transport chair, but she continued to be combative and was moved to a restraint chair for transport to a vehicle transfer area. This transfer area is known as the Sally Port. A Fairfax County Deputy Sheriff was assigned to record the deployment 
of CERT, and the video is currently part of the investigative file as evidence, which was gathered by the Major Crimes Division of the Fairfax County Police Department. Deputies then escorted Ms. McKenna from the cell area to the Sally Port where the transport vehicle was waiting. Once at the Sally Port, medical personnel from the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office checked Ms. McKenna and determined she was experiencing a medical emergency. The spit net and restraints were removed and medical staff and deputies from the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office administered CPR and also administered an automated external defibrillator while awaiting rescue personnel from the Fairfax City Fire Department. Ms. McKenna was then transported to the hospital by ambulance. Ms. McKenna was placed on life support at the hospital. On February 8th, the Fairfax County Office of the Sheriff contacted the Fairfax County Police Department to inform us that Ms. McKenna was going to be taken off life support and they requested our Major Crimes Division detectives respond to work an in-custody death investigation. Ms. McKenna was taken off life support and died on Sunday, February 8th. The investigation file and all related evidence involving the death of Ms. McKenna has been turned over to the Fairfax County Office of the Commonwealth's Attorney today. This criminal investigation was conducted thoroughly and is comprehensive. The police department has provided updates every 30 days of this investigation to keep the community informed of each stage of the investigation. The family of Ms. McKenna and our engaged community deserve a very thorough investigation and to accomplish this we have ensured every investigative avenue was used. The following are steps in the investigative process which were conducted over the last few months. We conducted over 50 in-depth interviews and re-interviews of sheriff staff and other first responders. The Office of the Medical Examiner conducted a death investigation which produced the report of autopsy. We have secured all evidence including a video as recorded by the sheriff's personnel. We also conducted a forensic independent testing analysis of the electronic control weapon to determine if it was working in accordance with manufacturer's specifications and to validate the number of times it was deployed during the event. We also have transcription of all interviews and we have reviewed all these transcripts. We have collected all reports produced by the Office of the Sheriff. We have produced an investigative report and the entire investigative case file was submitted to the Office of the Commonwealth's Attorney. This very thorough investigation took approximately five months. We did have difficulty in procuring an independent forensic laboratory to conduct analysis of the electronic control weapon, which extended this investigation by at least one month. However, this analysis is necessary to ensure we conducted a thorough investigation, which Ms. McKenna's family and the community expects and deserves. Any death is tragic, and Ms. McKenna's death is understandably devastating to her family and the community. My thoughts and prayers are with her family, our community, and all involved.